Hello everyone. Today I wanted to go ahead and speak to you all about what I believe the level 25 PvP meta for Sod will shape out to be and why I think it will shape out to be that. Specifically talking about class viability and in what settings they're going to excel and not excel, etc. Uh, also, I just want to mention um, if you guys like the art you see in the background, a lot of these slides, a lot of it comes from I am a Dreamwalker. Dude puts out 10 out of 10 art WoW related. I love all of it. That's why I keep using it in the slides. I'm subbed to him on coffee. Check him out. Uh, anyway, before I go any further, though, I just want to say thank you, everyone, for the support. Uh, when I first, when I, when I when I made my priest leveling guide, I was not trying to to even put it out there to the YouTube algorithm. I was just making it to post into a Discord because I didn't like the way they were recommending their priest leveling guides for Classic WoW. And a ton of people have loved it. A ton of people have asked for more videos because they they like the uh, informative PowerPoint style. Um, so I decided I'll keep trying to make them. So if you guys have requests for videos, like this one was a request, a bunch of requests actually, uh, feel free to post that down in the comments and ask uh, for whatever videos you want me to make. And if it's something that I think I can do some research on and give an informed opinion about, then I will probably make it. Uh, yeah, so let's get into it. So I think a lot of people when they're asking about this, like make it serious, blah, 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 they're asking sort of inherently, is my class viable? And so I wanna answer that before I actually get into the video. Because I think a lot of people are worried about this for no reason. Because the answer is yes. Classic WoW is not League of Legends, all right? Every class in spec and bio is viable in Classic WoW because Classic WoW is not a game of fair fights, all right? You, your class can suck. In, in the early brackets, especially in Vanilla WoW before all these sod runes came out, classes like Warrior and Shaman just kind of sucked in PvP, to be honest. They just got killed by everyone. But if you just show up with better gear, more consumables world buffs, more friends, you can just beat anyone. It doesn't matter. You can take any class and beat anyone else with it as long as you've invested more into gearing and consumes and whatever else to make your character stronger. You'd see in the top right, I post on the slide, if you saw that's a Zika, a clip from a Zika video where he was fighting, he challenged some guy to a Makara and the guy just showed up with three rows of world buffs and consumes and every single little thing you could put on your character to make them OP. And Zico couldn't even damage the guy. The guy immuned every single last bit of Zico's damage because he was just geared to the teeth with consumes. That dude probably could have just unplugged, like just ripped out 80% of the keys on his keyboard and just had light attacks and still beaten Zico in a fight. He had so many consumables on him. And so that's just to show you, it's like an extreme example, but it goes to show you just putting more time into prep can win any fight. And if, even if the enemies are more prepped than that, and, and they are prepped too, and they have a ton of good gear, whatever, just show up with more people. You just have a bigger gang than them, you're going to win. It's not a game of fair fights. So anyway, that being said, I will attempt to rate these classes on uh, how I think they'll excel, but I've, I've broken it down into multiple categories, not just a general PvP category, because I think that there is some nuance to the way a class would perform in a duel versus what they would perform in a 40v40, you know, Terran Mill, South Shore type fight. Uh, so to clarify how these are going, the first four is 1v1, small group, small group, sort of like anywhere between like two, three to, I say three and 10 players, but basically like anything you might see in arena. Uh, raid PvP is just like shit tons of people on both sides. And then BG is obviously just Warsong Gulch in the 25, right? It's, it's only Warsong Gulch. Healing though, for the classes that can heal, which there's now five of them, uh, if you can heal the first four uh, like categories, 1v1, small group, raid, PvP, BGs, they're, you're rated on those categories as if you were a DPS spec. And then the healing is just sort of a catch-all, sort of how you do as a healer in, in any of those four categories. In general, for all the healers, healers are generally better the more people you have. So in like those raid PvP settings where it's like 50v50, you can basically not get enough healers. But in, in 1v1 settings or small group settings, they're, they're, you still want them. They're not as good, maybe. They're still really good, actually. It's not even true. They're, they're, you still really want healers in small group PvP. Anyway, let's get into it. So let's talk about Warriors. Uh, warriors, they get Warbringer. Warbringer is going to be an absolute essential part of any Warrior PvP kit moving forward. And it's because, now, you, you, if you don't know what Warbringer does, it makes it so your charge and your intercept will and intervene on there, so you might get intervene too in this game, but charge and intercept will now cleanse you of any movement impairing effects, so roots and slows, and then you can also charge in combat now. So what that means now, you don't get intercept yet, unfortunately, at level 25, but it does mean your charge on a 15 second cooldown, you can charge them, 
And you can charge out of a root, purge yourself of that root and any slows you have on you, and stick to the opponent. And that's sort of like the key part of playing Warrior in any expansion. You want to be really sticky and stay on top of them, and that's a really, really, really good tool to stay sticky. You do get some good abilities in the in the low-level brackets. I mean, obviously you get Hamstring, it's a quintessential to PvP Warrior. But you also get Intimidating Shout. But you're missing some big stuff. You're missing Mortal Strike, which is an absolutely massive part of PvP Warrior. You're missing Pummel. Which, I mean, you do get Shield Bash, but you have to swap, and you have to waste a global to swap to your shield. So it's not as effective. You don't get Intercept, and you don't get Zerker Rage. So you're not actually immune to Fear yet, which is another pretty quintessential part of the Warrior Kit. You're going to be okay with people, but you're not really going to do that well in a 1v1 or a dueling scenario. You just don't have the support yet in your kit, and the runes really didn't get you there. You got some good runes. I mean, you're going to run Quick Strike as well on top of Warbringer which is going to give you some good two, two-handed damage. Your, your arms PvP spec is probably going to be decent, but you're just not at that level yet. So you're probably you're probably the weakest class, honestly, out of all nine in this early bracket, if I had to guess. Um, you do have some classes. If you can stick to people, you're going to be doing good damage. It's going to be hard to stick to people, even with Warbringer, and you're probably going to get blown up by casters. Uh, anyway, let's so move on to Paladin. Paladins, they don't really have... In vanilla, they didn't really have a lot of PvP. There wasn't really a lot of kit to their PvP kit. There wasn't a lot they could do. But they get most of it early on. So you get Hodge, which is absolutely essential to playing a Red Paladin. But you also get Bop and yourself Bop. You get Freedom, which is going to be amazing. You get Seal of Command. You do have Seal of Justice, too, which gives you a 2% chance to stun people on an attack. But it, it DRs your stun for Hodge, so it's not really that good. Um, and you'd probably just rather want the damage out of Seal Command. But on top of that, your runes, you get Inspiring Exemplar, which is, makes you and your party fear immune, like it's a Tremor Totem. Uh, and then you get Crusader Strike and Divine Storm, which is just going to be plenty of damage on top of what you were already doing with Judgment and your seals. So they're going to be pretty good in PvP. You're going to hodge someone and just run up and just start blasting them with Holy Damage. You're going to be pretty good against classes with a lot of physical resistance because you're going to still do a lot of holy damage and not necessarily physical damage. But it, you're, you're still mostly physical, probably, in, inevitably. You are missing Repentance. You are missing Hammer. You are missing Cleanse, which as an H pal is a pretty big miss to not have Cleanse. But overall, expect to be a really strong duelist. You're going to be a really, really good duelist in the 1v1. Maybe not as strong as another class we'll get to at the end of this presentation, but... You're going to be really, really good. In raid PvP, not as good. I mean, you can drop, run in, drop a Consecrate, but you're not like you're not going to be that pumping. It's usually a bunch of AoE damage you need in those big, clumped AoE fights, and Paladin just doesn't really bring that. And although they do are decently tanky, they're not tanky enough to sort of just waddle up. They don't have a Gap Closer, which is big. So as a Paladin, if you're playing a Rep Paladin PvP in the Ashenville World PvP, your first, second, and third priority is get that mount because you're probably going to need that mount to just run up on somebody who's not mounted and start the fight on top of them. That's really going to be your quintessential way to, to be in a good spot as a paladin, because you don't have a way of closing that gap otherwise. And outside of PvP stuff, I don't know if you can get Goblet Rock on But anyway, Hunters. If you've played a Twink in the 19 or 29 brackets in Vanilla WoW, you know Hunters are absolutely busted in those brackets. So surprise, surprise, they're really good in the middle of those brackets as well. Um, there's... Multiple ways you can actually build a really strong Hunter class with these runes. You can go BM or MM. Melee doesn't really have the support yet. Again, you don't have a Gap Closer, which is really big on a Melee class. So it's going to be hard to really stick to people. But your range specs are pretty insane. Now, BM is probably generally better in, ter in terms of other performance of PvP. Maybe not Raid PvP. But the the MM spec, although it's a bit memeier, is going to be insane in, in PvP. For those of you who don't know, Lone Wolf increases your damage by 25% if you don't have your pet out. And sniper training gives you 30% crit chance if you've been standing still for 6 seconds. And Chimera Shot is just a shot that does various things depending on what you have on your target, but it does more damage to a Serpent's thing. And you get Aim Shot in this bracket. I didn't even know you get Aim Shot, but you, you can get Aim Shot in this bracket on top of your standard Concussive and Wings Clip. So if you want to, like especially if you're a Night Elf, you can just like Shadow Meld in a bush off of the road Wait for some unsuspecting horde boy to pop out, and then like Viet Cong style, just aim shot, multi shot, auto shot, you know, serpent sting, chimera shot, and just literally one shot someone, and then like invis pot or shadow melt again, and just run away and slip into the shadows again. I mean, 
you're literally going to be like that Warcraft three style, you know, like like when the orcs are like chopping down the forest and they're like hearing like Ishnuala coming from the trees. Like it's like you're going to be one shotting people from stealth as as a as a night elf hunter. It's going to be insane. So if if you want a time to try that, out, it sounds fun. That's probably it. In terms of what they're missing, they do get a lot, but they are missing the scatter trap. So the thing with a hunter, if someone gets on top of you, you're probably screwed, to be honest, because unless you're BM, you're probably going to fare better as BM. You don't really have a way to play keep away other than wing clipping and trying to waddle away. But anyone who's on top of you is probably going to be CCing you. Also, in a 1v1, mages can still dead zone you and your pet. You're probably fucked there. Uh, all right, let's talk about shamans. Shamans are interesting. First off, when we get it out of the way, I know there's so many inherent shamans on the Reddit who are just constantly coping on a bunch of stuff. You're probably going to suck at 25. Sorry to the inherent shamans. You don't get storm strike and you don't get wind fury. You don't have. You do get your insta cast wolf, but it's not like in future expansions where it means you can't be slowed behind 100. You can still be slowed a lot. It's okay, but like your your only thing you really have is lava lash as like a filler ability, and that's not a lot. So don't expect them to be that sick in the 25 bracket. However, elemental shamans will suck in one v ones, but great in everywhere else. In fact, I probably should have put them as a 5v5 on raid PvP. Maybe got, if I had to go back and change I would. But uh, Elemental Shamans are insane coming into the level 25 bracket and just in, in SOD in general. You get Lava Burst and Overload, which doesn't just Overload. If the, overload is essentially Spell Wind Fury, but that Spell Wind Fury also applies to Lava Burst. That's not even something you get in Wrath, where in Wrath they're already one-shotting people. Now, it's going to obviously depend on what the damage values of Lava Burst look like at 25. I don't exactly know what that looks like, but if it's the ability it's supposed to be where it's a shit ton of damage and always crits if you have Flame Shock on you, expect Shamans to just be globaling people if they're given some time to just sit there uninterrupted for like six seconds. Now, that is the trick, though. In a 1v1, you're not going to get the chance to sit there and free cast for six seconds. You're going to get locked down and killed. And in small groups, they, if someone knows what they're doing, they're going to try to lock down that shaman too because you don't have a way of getting away either. But if you're in raid PvP or you're in a small group and someone's not watching you and they forget about the shaman for a couple seconds, you, the second you're able to get a lava burst chain lightning off when you have flame shock on a target, someone's going down. They're, you're going to deal shit tons of damage. And especially if you roll the Wind Fury crit you know, slot machine and come up sevens, you're going to kill anyone in the game in a global. It's going to be insane. Uh, let's talk about Druid. Druid gets a decent amount of skills, to be honest. So Druid does get their sort of standard keep away stuff, where they have their roots, they have bash, they have charge. They have fairy fire against the rogue, so you're going to be good in the rogue matchup because of that. It's a really good ability. Uh, but they don't, like, they nothing has been, they do get more stuff. Like Skull Bash, by the way, if you don't know, it's a new thing for the cats that lets you kick and charge at someone. But nothing is really, like, like, they didn't get a shit ton of damage, and they didn't get, like, exceptionally sticky. And that's always been sort of the problems with Feral Druid in PvP. And we'll get into Boomies in a sec, but, like, Feral Druids, like, don't don't have insane combo potential like a Rogue does in, in, the, uh, future, in the future, not necessarily today. And they don't really have the damage of other classes, like maybe a Hunter or something like that. So it's like, you're probably going to have to default back to your standard a way of doing it in vanilla where you just like attrition people with your really efficient healing and then damage with like the, the and melee. So you're going to be pretty strong in that capacity if you're playing that little cheesy attrition style. But outside of that, I don't really see enough to make you like an insane, just run up, blow someone up, run away kind of class. Like you might, you might hope that they could be as a feral boomy. Boomies are going to be like Ellie shamans, to be honest. They're probably going to be worse at the Ellie Shaman job than Ellie Shamans, but they're going to be pretty close. They have more CC options than an Ellie Shaman. You're going to be able to root people. You're going to be able to slip out of roots. You're going to be able to slip out of slows and run away. But they're they're not going to be like absolutely annihilating people from range like an Ellie Shaman might. Now, I might be wrong on that. With Star Surge and Sunfire, they might be able to just pump damage into people from a range. You obviously have very efficient damage with Wrath, but... I, I just don't see them doing that sort of instant global lava burst chain lightning sort of damage that just blows someone up. Uh, so they'll be good in those raid PvP settings and those big PvP settings. You're going to want to play Ellie Shaman or, or sorry, Boomy. Probably not as good as the other casters, but still pretty good. 
BGs, obviously you are an essential part of Warsong Gulch. You cannot run as Warsong Gulch comp without a fly carrying druid. Still essential, still important. You are a requirement. Expect to get brought. And if you're a boomy or a feral and you want to be a mid, boomies and mid can be okay. Ferals maybe not so much. Again, Ferals a fly carrier. Healing, you have a really good healing kit now, but uh, probably not as good as a priest, I would say, in terms of your raw healing output and the tools you have available to you. But you're way, way better now, and you do get life bloom. So expect to be... Honestly, I'd say really good. If it, I, I might even say they're like second place behind a priest in terms of being a raw healing support character. Just because they have decent CC on top of pretty good heals now. Uh, rogue. Okay, so Rogue is like... Uh, rogues aren't Rogues right now, unfortunately. And I love Rogue, but let's talk about it. So let's talk about the big miss here, all right? You don't have Cheap Shot, you don't have Blind, and you don't have Kidney Shot either. So... If you've ever played Rogue, and they don't have prep too, if you've ever played Rogue, you know that means you basically don't have like 70% of what makes you a Rogue in PvP. Cheap Shot is sent, especially, it is a, Cheap Shot is an essential part of the Rogue kit for their 100 to 0 CC chains in Class 1. That's how you play a Rogue. You Cheap Shot, you build combo points to get into a Kidney Shot later, you Kidney Shot them, you Blind, Gouge, whatever, Sap, get back, reset, do that again until they're dead. Right? That's the way you play a rogue, and if they break out, you flowchart child, adapt to that, get them back in the CC chain, and get them back to killing them before they can react. So without Cheap Shot, where you can get that instance cast stun off, and then get the, the combo points rolling so you can start spending them on kidney shots, you're not going to have that power. So in reality, at 25, you're just going to have to play like some psycho combat rogue, where you're just going to imp sprint, Vanish with plus Shadow Strike to close the gap as well, and just try to blitz someone down before they can kill you. And you do have Crippling Poison, so like as long as they're not purging themselves, you can do that. But that's you're just going to be all or nothing. You're going to show up behind someone, and you're basically just going to ambush, start stabbing them. If they root you, you imp sprint, stab them more, Vanish Shadow Strike, stab them more. Like the, That's your entire kit. You're just going to try to stay on top of them and prison shank someone to death. Probably not that good, not as good as you'd like for the, like, the thinking man's rogue that you're going to get at later levels, but it, it's not terrible. And at the end of the day, you're still a rogue, so if you're talking about world PvP, you can just wait for them to pull a, like a bear or something, wait for them to pull a mob, and then just walk up behind them and start the fight, and they're going to die every time. Um, raid PvP, you're practically useless, to be honest. It, it, like you can, yeah, you can like, sneak up behind them and try to go for a healer. But the second you do that, everyone's just going to turn around and one-shot you. Rogues like don't have much health. Uh, they're probably one of the squishiest classes in the game. Probably the second squishiest behind a mage. But you don't have the shields of a mage. So, uh, uh, BGs. Rogues are actually pretty decent BGs because they're actually pretty good at locking down druids because they constantly apply crippling poison. They have sprint. They do good damage. So you're just going to basically try to run down a, a druid and, and stop them. So that's sort of why you bring rogues. So they're good at like flag defense and flag recovery but not so much anything else. Also, your your stealth, by the way, at this level is just unbearably slow. So you're going to hate that. <laughs> but it, it you yeah, it's going to be bad. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Priest. Priest is an interesting one. You get some cool spells. Probably the, the strongest thing that we don't know if we're even getting yet, but it seems like it is, is that they have this new thing where you're going to be able to like pray at a grave site, and it sounds like you're going to be able to swap out your racials, your Priest racials, I should say. Which case that would be awesome. Um, it would mean that everyone could get access to Fear Ward or uh, Devouring Plague, depending on what you needed. At the early levels, Devouring Plague is actually really strong, even though it costs just an unreasonable amount of mana. If you have good enough gear, you'd be able to eat that mana cost just fine. But uh, it does a lot of healing, and that's sort of like the quintessential part of what makes DP so good is that it gives you a ton of self healing. So that plus Powered Shield and Renew. You're really, really durable in a 1v1. On top of that, you get Blackout, you get Dispel, you get Shadow Word Death, you get Psychic Scream. So you're like, you're the, the way Priest, everyone imagines fighting Priest today, where you're this really durable caster that does good, consistent damage while being impossible to kill and constantly fearing people. You're still that person, just not as good at it. You're missing Vamp Embrace, which is really sad because that is like a good self-healing tool on you. You're missing Silence and you're missing Shadow Form for that physical reduction and, and increased damage. Uh, you do get Homunculi, though. It's unclear how much your little Homunculi dudes are going to... Like, how much damage they're going to deal. But it's probably still going to be a good 
good uh, PvP cooldown. If anything, for just like pushing back casts and stuff like that. Uh, healing wise, you're probably the best one in the game. She Powered shield is insane for PvP. On top of that, renewing everybody. You have really strong heals. You have a ton of healing things that just got printed with penance and prayer of mending. You have a ton, ton of tools. You're gonna be really good in, in raid healing scenarios, and that's probably your your one of your best options here. Mage, mage is weird. So mage traditionally in the 19 to 29 bracket wasn't really that good to be honest, but they get a lot of frost support from their runes. And in the 19 bracket, they're kind of bad, but in the 25 bracket, they actually it's like pretty good for them. Like a lot of people don't get what they need, but frost mage kind of gets a lot. Now they don't get ice block and they don't get conical, which is pretty sad. Conical is not that big of a loss, but you don't get ice block, which really sucks. But you do get cold snap. And on top of that, it's like, oh, well, you can't cold snap your ice block, but okay, you can cold snap icy veins and fingers of frost. So you're going to be able to like, if you can get someone's cooldown, or get someone's uh, trinket, you can Nova them to get the freeze. And then fingers of frost, icy veins, you know, frost bolt, ice lance, ice lance, ice lance, and just blast people. Now you're not going to have five out of five shatter. You can only get one out of five shatter at 25, which is kind of sad, but you still get a little bit, I guess, uh, in terms of that 10% damage. Uh, but you're already just going to be doing so much damage. It's going to be insane. You, like, you have a lot of burst damage with those cooldowns, and the fact that you can cold snap them is pretty insane. Uh, 1v1s, you're going to be really, really strong because that's going to be a lot of classes that just aren't going to be able to fight you. I don't know. Maybe I should rate them a 4 out of 5. They're, it's kind of like, questionable. 4 out of 5, 5 out of 5. They're not the best, uh, but they're pretty good. In raid PvP, though, you are like the raid PvP class. Mages have always been insane in those big raid B raid, raid scenarios, like where it's 40 people grouped up. Blizzard's insane. Blink Arcane Explosion's insane. Blink Frost Nova is insane. Someone can just cast heals into you, keep you alive as you just blow up the enemy team. You're really, really strong in those scenarios. And so you're if in terms of what might probably is going to be showing up in Asheville, Mage is a great choice. But let's talk about great choices. I I had like it, you're gonna look at that one v one bar and be like, what the fuck is that? Warlocks are insane. Like I mean, going through this list, I'm like looking. I'm like, oh, like warriors get like a little bit. Oh, they get like quick strike. That's like you know like, like another attack. It's like oh, what do tank warlocks get? They become small raid bosses. Like it's. You, okay, let's talk about Warlocks. So they get 500% armor. They get sack from Voidwalker, so they're going to be able to get like a 600-something plus shield. And then they're going to get two of them because you get Felbomb. On top of that, you're going to be able to make your Hellstone. You get Master Channeler, which is going to make turn your Drain Life essentially into a Siphon Life. And you're going to get Incinerate if you want some range damage. That's actually pretty good. Or you can just have Instant Cast Searing Pains. You can't get kicked on an Instant Cast. On top of that... You can get that and still get 5 out of 5 Corruption for Instant Cast Corruption and your your uh, Curse of Pain or whatever it's called, uh, the, the one that does damage. You're going to deal tons of the standard Warlock damage. You're going to be able to fear people like crazy. And you're going to be unkillable. You're going to have to, like, people are going to have to get through, like, 3,000 health to kill a Warlock at level 25. I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. There's 60s that don't even have 3,000 health. And that's probably what you're going to have to, like, they just have so, 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 so much. And if they get good gear, I mean, just watch out for Warlocks. They're going to be insane in PvP. In small groups, I mean, again, yeah, like, it, you could, like, honestly, they look so good that, like, you could put up any three classes or and face them against three Warlocks, and three Warlocks probably beats them. I mean, Warlocks just look broken in, in scenarios. They probably take a bit of a hit in raid PvP because in raid PvP, you're just going to get blasted down by casters, and you don't have the AoE damage that, like, mages have. So in terms of what you might see a lot of in Ashenville, they may not be that crazy. But like in 1v1s, I don't see how anyone beats a tank lock. They're just they're just gonna be so tanky. Especially for physical damage classes. I mean it, you might as well just just lean over. I mean, they, it's just gonna be bad. BGs, they weren't traditionally that good in the 19 or 29 bracket, but I mean with these buffs, I just don't see how they're anything other than insane. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there turns out to be some kryptonite. I mean, paladins, if you want to be insane, like you you can spec exorcism, which gives you like, what, 100% chance to crit against undead or demons. I think metamorphosis makes you a demon. So maybe paladins are like the the hero we needed in this time to try and smite the warlock oppressors. But I don't know. I, I'm going to need, like, maybe there's some kryptonite I'm not aware of yet, but they just look insane looking at the abilities. 
Um, all right, let's talk about what actually is going to like look like in Ashenville PvP because I think it's easy to look at like like the brackets I have out. Like, oh, why you care about raid PvP? How often is that going to happen? Honestly, in Ashenville, I suspect it's going to be the majority of the PvP you're going to be doing. First off, let's talk about before we get into the PvP event BFD, which is going to be the new raid. BFD is like a worse BRM than BRM. BRM was a problem because there was only two entrances into BRM that were narrow chokes. And it was only narrow for a little bit, and then it was like a big ring, so you could maybe lose it in there. But during that narrow choke, people would just camp that and prevent people from going in and grief people all the time. Well, BFD is a very long, narrow cave that is very easy to camp for at multiple spots. Basically, the entire length of it is just there's a very small choke point people are funneled into. So fully suspect that people will be like just camping this as like like on a Tuesday night, they're just gonna try to grief the other faction, wood department style or something, and just camp it, prevent anyone from going in, get mass reported, whatever. Uh but it's gonna be insane. So expect a lot of raid PvP to be going on there, especially just expect a death run if you're not winning that fight that day. Uh in terms of actual Ashenville PvP, when they were talking at BlizzCon, they basically described it as like this all track valley winter grasp type thing. Where you're going to have two bosses, there's going to be a world PvP that it kicks off. You're going to have to go try to kill those two bosses. Uh, but if you need to weaken them, you have to like, capture bases along the way, which is going to weaken them so that you can get your party in there and, and maybe kill them with fewer people. Uh, if they're not going to limit the amount of people that can go to these events, like they would limit it for like Winter Grasp, like Winter Grasp already basically just broke Blizzard servers. I don't know what their plan is for this. So if you had to expect anything, expect shit tons of lag. If it doesn't lag, I will be shocked. Uh, but if you do get to play the game in these exa- uh, examples, then expect classes like Mage, Hunter, and Shaman, which are these like ranged DPS kings to just be pumping people at range before they can really do anything. Those are probably going to be the biggest ones who excel in these types of situations. Don't mean Warlocks are broken, so who knows. Uh, here's the tier list. Um, I honestly thought about putting Warlock on like a tier and then have an empty tier and then the rest of the classes, but I thought it would be too memey. Warlocks would just look so broken. They're just so tanky in, on top of the, the the tons of dot damage. Even if you beat them, you're probably just going to die to the dots afterwards. Like They look so strong. They look so annoying to beat. It's going to be rough. Outside of Warlocks, or if someone managed to find the Warlock Kryptonite and uh, you know, it turns out Paladins just beat them every time, uh, hunters are going to be insane. Again, you're going to be able to like Viet Cong hide in the bushes and just pop out, one shot someone, slip back into the pine, the trees, or some shit like that. Uh, they're going to do tons of damage. And even if you didn't want to go MM, you can go BM. Your your pet probably is strong enough to solo someone. Uh, they look really strong. They've always been really good in these level brackets. I suspect they will get even better relative to other classes. Mages traditionally wouldn't be very good in these brackets, but they get a lot of support. They get some strong cooldowns. They get a lot of CC abilities. They're not missing a ton, uh, so expect them to be pretty good in 1v1s and then really good in raid PvP. Decent. If they have a good controlling group, probably good in, in the sort of mid-small mid, mid small groups too. Paladins, strong 1v1ers. I think they get worse as, as the more people get added to that equation. Uh, but in 1v1 scenarios, they're going to be really strong. And again, maybe you're the Batman that we need to defend to defend ourselves against the Warlock Overlords. We don't know yet, but the Warlock's looking insane. Priests. Very durable, still good damage, still have your dots. If you can swap your racials out, it's going to be pretty huge. If you can get like you know like DP and then plus desperate prayer, like you're going to get a lot of uh, a lot of sort of healing there. So you're going to be really durable. You're going to be really hard to kill. You're going to put out consistent damage as a healer. You're insane. Priests have always been insane healers in class file because their abilities just get more healing than everyone else basically. But outside of that, I mean, they're they're just really good. So expect them to be good, great healers, pretty good DPS. They don't get the support they need, though, to be insane yet. Uh, Shamans, sort of the same thing. Really bad in the 1v1. Really good in the tons of people PvP. So if you want to play a Shaman, just try to jam yourself in the middle, make a bunch of friends, and just free cast Lightning Bolts on people. Uh, B-tiers, uh, honestly, if you're a warrior, it's looking pretty rough for you compared to, you know, I mean, you're never going to beat a Warlock. You're never going to beat a Paladin. You probably you might be the shaman in a one v one. That's probably what you got going for you. You might be rogue too. Uh, I don't know, but uh, you're looking pretty bad generally. You might do well in those like small group settings where you have a healer buddy. If you want to play a warrior, you can make it work. Just make sure you have a priest or a paladin pocketing you the entire time, and you'll do just fine. 
Uh, Druids and Rogues. Um, Rogues, obviously, you're playing half a Rogue right now. It's pretty sad. When the 40 bracket comes out, expect to be a lot better. But until it does, it's going to be pretty sad for you. Druids, you get a lot of stuff. You're an amazing, amazing raid class. You don't get a lot for PvP. You get some. I don't expect them to be insane. I expect them to be okay. I think range is going to be really strong, though, in these early brackets. And so I suspect them to be just not that good compared to the rest of the pack. But, yeah, so... That's it. Um, and uh, yeah, so hope you guys like the video. Also, if anyone is looking for a guild for Classic WoW or the new Season of Discovery, uh, check the description below. Uh, my guild is, is currently recruiting players. We're speedrun guild, 400 plus uh, world boss kills, uh, world, <laughs> world boss kills, uh, plus like server first knacks and AQ and blah, blah, blah. So uh, yeah, if you're interested, check out below. Otherwise, uh, thank you for watching.